I'm back. Hey guys, this is RPG Caster. So as you know, I've been out of action in the Vanguard scene for a very long time. However, I've come back. All of you are probably thinking, oh, he's back because of Tsukiyomi Stride. That's not why I'm back. I literally came back like two days before the Tsukiyomi Stride came out. In any case, I am here to do Decology 101 on the Tsukiyomi deck, as at least one commenter kind of requested from me a good two years back. So I personally started playing Vanguard back in 2011 when it first came out and I followed this game all the way through. I was destined to play oracles as they say and when I say that I literally mean it because I decided I was going to play whatever I pulled the most of and in those four boxes that I pulled I got four Amaterasu so yeah. And then of course when I split boxes with Nephonic I kept pulling Amaterasu and we never saw an Isolde or an Alfred. Sorry man. So then eventually set 3 came out, oracles weren't all that strong, I was getting owned by Goku left, right and center, and yeah, it was kind of disheartening. But then Ray of Hope came in and Tsukiyomi swept in and I picked that up, only to realize that that deck sucked. It was really bad, riding grade 3 Tsukiyomi all the time, without grade 1 and 2 and 0. It was just really bad. And you can ask Silent Tom, the co-founder of this channel, even though he doesn't play Vanguard anymore. I hated that deck. It didn't work. It sucked. But then as I tried different things, I tried different things. I tried running just three grade threes and they were only Tsukiyomi. I tried so many crazy things. I stumbled upon something pretty cool about the deck. The fact that the ride chain that puts cards at the bottom of the deck allows you to predict the future in a sense. By putting those cards at the bottom of the deck, if you have a good memory like I thought myself to have, you could essentially get to that point again by stalling or by kind of tanking it and be able to predict triggers, which was a big thing because people always guarded for two triggers back then. Oh, two triggers to guard, uh, they're not going to put it all in the Vanguard. Except I did and I got called a cheater for like a good three months before people realized, hey, he's actually onto something. Stride. Format is what got me back into this game. And the reason it got me back into this game is because it allows all the units to shine a little more. These stride units aren't broken by any means. They're really powerful, but they're not broken. And they just synergize really well with uh, a lot of the older cards that have really haven't gotten much support. Now enough with my rant and stuff. You probably just want to get into the deck analysis, which is what I'm gonna do. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go through my deck and I'm going to show you what I have done with it. So obviously since this is the Tsukiyomi deck, we'll be running off Tsukiyomi's engine, which are the grade 3, 2, 1, and of course Ichibyoshi, the starting vanguard. Now if you don't already know, these cards were like the first ride chain or the first type of ride chain where you take the top five cards of your deck and if your next piece of the chain is there you can superior ride it and you put the rest of the cards at the bottom now the feature here of course is the fact that you're putting cards at the bottom and you can set them in any order you like so that when inevitably your deck cycles around and comes back to those cards you put at the bottom you now know exactly every single card that's coming up you can predict your triggers you can draw into a null guard when you need to you can it, it just gives you free reign to do whatever you want with your own deck and you know as a result gives you a great superiority over what your opponent can do with theirs. Moving along from that this is of course a generation stride deck meaning that um, support for the stride is very important of course. So of course much like other stride decks I am running my I don't know what these are called but your grade one that can be uh, discarded as a Grade 3, if you're using it for stride. I know it has another on-call ability to search for Susano, I think. But, you won't really be using that ability simply because you're organizing your deck with all the different skills that put stuff to the bottom of the deck. Which means that, you really don't want to shuffle because otherwise that basically messes up your entire strategy. Additionally, I'm also running the following generation break units. The 12k hitter. And... Oracle's unique one that lets you draw. Um, I just like 12k hitters personally, they're really good, um, especially once you see my trigger line up, um, uses like stand triggers, I actually really do like 12k hitters because they can hit a lot of units without needing to have supporters, 
um, especially against decks like Kago that like to shoot the back row or if you're just not drawing into any of your supporters having these really helps. I'm aware that they only work when you have um, generation break one which means you have to have stride but I feel like they're a lot more reliable than the other one we had whose name escapes me. However this 9k one I think his name was I'm not, Kuroi Kazuchi, I think. Um, basically, whenever you attack the Vanguard, Generation Break 1, Counter Blast 1, you can draw a card. Doesn't need to hit. <laughs> I'm really happy that unlike the old Generation cards, you don't need to hit. Um, and it just allows you to take that top card off the deck. Obviously, when you've reached your stack of cards that you put to the bottom, this card allows you to dig that extra one. For example, oh no, I've used all these abilities, I'm still one card away from that triple trigger check. This card is very good for just taking that one card off, getting you there. Or if you know, I really need a null guard, next card's a null guard, you can just grab it with this. Of course, the main vanguard of the deck itself, regardless of the fact that Sugiyomi is not Sugiyomi, but um, Susano, the main grade three um, stride support kind of unit. This is the boss unit. Um, the reason I use this obviously is because when you stride on top of it, ability counter blast one, take the two, top two cards of your deck, put one in hand, put one to the bottom. Again, this theme of cycling cards. The thing that makes this even better is once you have two cards, um, generation break two, so two cards with the face down or face up, whatever you want to call it, in the generation zone, this gains 5k in the crit. Now in the past, oracles have always had a power, uh, a problem when it comes to hitting with power. We did get stuff from like Pentagonal Magus, but that was really, really kind of situational because you needed to declare the top card of the deck. Not saying I couldn't because, you know, you know your entire deck, so you're gonna know what's coming up next. But, um, it just didn't seem like a very good unit. This on the other hand, you don't need to do anything once you've Generation Break 2. It's already online and being able to hit with an extra critical also potentially knowing what triggers are at the top of your deck it's a really big threat against your opponent or if they don't even know that you know what's at the top of the deck that could win you the game kind of jump the gun with recording i forgot to mention i'm also running these as kind of filler grade ones um there wasn't really any other grade ones i really wanted to run so having a supporter that could also be attacker was attacker was great but now let's move on to the rest of the support which happens to only be grade one, so I guess it's not too much of a thing that I missed that. Um, I'm running four of the new perfect guards. These require you to have, well, they work as normal perfect guards, but they only guard the vanguard. But the advantage of these is, of course, the fact that if you already have a copy of it in the graveyard, when you use it, you can unflip one damage, which is great because all these effects from the stride and Susano and um, Kuroi Kazuchi, they all use counter blast. Sure, it's not very, very heavy, but they do use counter blast, so it's just a nice thing to have. And it's a lot better than, I guess, the old perfect guards. Sure, you can't guard your rear guards, but in this deck, it doesn't really matter so much since you're generating so much hand already. Um, the last grade one slot went to one copy of Lemonade. I don't run a lot of these because they're 5k power, which is a little bit weak, but you're not really doing much else with the soul. Um, you don't really use Grade 3 Sukumi's ability even though you ride her for this deck, so using the Soul Blast to unflip 2 damage, again, goes great with all these counter blast abilities we're getting. Before we get into my um, extra deck, I, I don't really know, I'll be honest, I don't know what it's called. The, the Stride deck? Generation Zone? Whatever. Is there a trigger lineup? So, 4 Psychic Birds, standard in most Oracle decks, because you're going to use Criticals and additionally, Psychic Bird's just probably one of the best triggers um, Oracles has, if not most cards have. I mean, that Banshee from Grand Blue that does the same thing, invaluable. Just being able to Soul Charge and draw one, again helping you if you're one card away from your stack. Um, additionally, I use 8 crits in my deck. I don't like to go overboard with the crits, I know there are a lot of people that think 12 crit or bust, 16 crit or bust. I'm not that kind of person. I like to leave room for more things, in which case, I personally use four stands. A lot of people like to use draws and crits. Um, that might work, sure, that's great. The reason I don't use draw triggers in this deck is because, um, as you'll come to see as you play this deck, 
the amount of hand advantage this deck can generate on its own is already really really great i mean when you do the stride combo you're getting like one two three six cards in hand seven cards in hand on that turn and you don't really need the draw triggers all the draw triggers end up being uh dead cards that you draw into because they're only 5k shields i mean it's great when you do trigger into them but I, I just don't like them additionally i already talked about i don't like overrunning with crits the reason why i've chosen stance is when you know that you have triggers coming stand triggers specifically you can attack in a strategic manner to get the most out of your attacks. For example, if I know I have a stand trigger coming up, I can attack without boosting to one of their rear guards to guarantee myself to get rid of an interceptor or a 5k shield at least. That takes more advantage away from my opponent. And I like that a lot better for this deck. Sure, it tips them off that you know what's coming, um, but that again adds to the threat and makes them drop more cards which can help you out in the long run when you finish them off. Um, of course, I am running four heals. I don't know many people that don't run four heals. Four heals is a standard. There's a reason why they only let you have four. It's because the trigger is just too good. Um, and I've used the two different types of heal triggers because I like the two different arts. I couldn't decide, so I just ran both. Just as a aside, this deck is pre Fighters Collection 3, which means I only have what was released at um, Vanguard G Booster 2. Meaning that I only had stuff like Kirin and the Elementals and all that kind of stuff. So, what I have is I run two Kirin, which is the vanilla when it hits um, check top two, one to hand, one to bottom. I run the Seahorse looking Crayon Elemental, which is Cannabis 1, Flip 1, G Zone, and it gets 5k for every flipped G zone unit, and of course, I run four of Takemi Kazuchi, I think it was called. Um, basically, Takemi Kazuchi, Takemi Kazuchi is a very, very good card, and it's like really, really helping the Tsukiyomi engine a lot. On its own, on the turn you ride, stride, sorry, this card, you can potentially get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten cards off the top of the deck. Draw for turn is one. Susanoo's ability when striding is two. Um, his own ability is four, and then you're triple checking. Ten cards cycled through. Sure, they're not all added to hand. Some go to the bottom, whatever. But that's that's a good quarter of your deck gone in one turn. That's cycling, which is what Tsukiyomi really needed because the problem with the deck in being able to keep up with Limit Break and Legion and all that was the fact that by the time Sukiyomi did get to the stack, it was already too late. The opponent already had too much advantage. In this particular case, I can feasibly get back to my stack on turn two, turn three of grade three, very, very fast. And by that point, I have the advantage. I know what's coming. I know what I'm gonna trigger. I know what I'm gonna draw into. And I know how to set myself up in a way that allows me to get the most advantage. Kirin at the moment is a filler. I know there's a Tsukiyomi stride coming out. I'm very excited for that. Kirin is just kind of a filler, something that I can ride. And since it's the first thing I'm going to be striding when I attack, it's an on-hit ability. In most cases, they won't guard and they'll let that through, allowing me to cycle the cards. In the event that they don't, that's still a win because early game, they're dumping that null guard or those shields for something that, to me, doesn't really matter where it hits or not. The Seahorse Cray Elemental guy, I don't know his name, but the reason I run him is because of the power. If you know your opponent has no Null Guards and you want to push through guaranteed, ride him because him with the uh, however many are in the generation zone can get big. I've had it swinging for 60 plus K, obviously with boosts, and knowing that there are like critical triggers, three of them on top of the deck. And that will just end the game outright. There's like no way the opponent can survive that kind of thing unless they've stacked heal triggers on top of their deck or something. Of course, I don't claim to be some omnipotent, all-knowing guy. So I have a couple of a little sides that I can talk about with the deck. Amaterasu and the Legion. I am in the camp that I don't like the Amaterasu Legion. Um, I remember being the person 
in my group of friends that was most excited for it. I was kind of like, yes, oracles are finally back in the game. I can get into this full force, but it was really a big disappointment. And to add to the fact that when you stride on the Legion, it doesn't stay in Legion after it comes off, just makes me think it's not a viable option. However, if the idea of having Tsukiyomi grade three stuck on 9K scares you, Amaterasu is still a very feasible grade three choice besides Susanoo. Um, because it just cycles cards fast as well. You soul charge a card and you can check the top and put it to the top or bottom. It's just a really good card. It's a probably one of the only booster one cards um, that I still consider to be able to compete with the current meta and it's just a really good card. Um, the disadvantage obviously being the 10k, um, you could run this and I was thinking of running it in this deck but I personally like the idea of having a safety in Tsukiyomi's superior ride to grade 3 over um, using Amaterasu for whatever reason. So that's just a personal preference choice, but that's another option for you. Another option you guys might be confused that I didn't explore was this card right here, Silent Tom. Um, don't get me wrong, Silent Tom's a great card and there are a lot of effects nowadays that kind of mimic the ability to stop your opponent from guarding with certain cards. Silent Tom is a very good card. I just personally don't want to use it. I would prefer to use the 12k units because I'm running stand triggers and that creates more pressure for my opponent. However, if you're not running stand triggers, I would absolutely go for Silent Tom. Even if you are running stand triggers, you can go for Silent Tom if you want. But for my deck, it was just a personal choice. I didn't think he was a good fit but I'm not dismissing the fact that he's a very, very good card to go inside this deck. Anyway, thank you very much for checking out First Deckology 101. I hope I don't get in trouble because I actually don't have permission to post this video. Like, you think I'm joking? I don't. I asked someone for the password and they gave it to me because the channel's inactive. So if you didn't want me to post this, boss man, I'm sorry. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this. Do you want it to keep going? And of course, keep in mind this is not a Vanguard channel. This is a channel that supports all the card games that the NECA Cards Oz Animart business kind of promotes. That being Vanguard, Wish Wars, Force of Will, and Buddy Fight. How could I forget Buddy Fight? I play Buddy Fight. So until next time, guys, if there is a next time, I will see you then.